Okay, so I, I've had my TK Star GPS for a couple of years now. Um, I think, is it an issue? Yeah, one of the issues with it is that it's rebranded, white labeled, whatever you want to call it, into loads of different things. Um, and unless you get to the kind of, the root of who provides it, then you could be missing out on a few things. Um, I think most people know about the, the app, and most people know about you can you can view it online as well, so you can see the stuff online. Um, so the app and the online stuff, I think, is targeted more towards people who have got lots of these in lots of different um, vehicles, so they can see what's going on and stuff. Um, so, so not really that important for me in my situation. I, I need this if my bike gets stolen, and I think that's what a lot of people are is is it's kind of why they've got it. So. And unless your bike has just been stolen or has been stolen recently you won't have a an experience of what it's like now I haven't had that experience thankfully um, but when I did the last video I thought well what if what happens if it goes to today and I kind of ran through that scenario and and, and played it out and yeah it failed on me because I'd, I'd missed a few key things so importantly, I'd done the APN stuff correctly. When you, um, let me see if I've got a spare one. When you get the device and you put your SIM card in it, um, whatever, whatever SIM card you put in it, I think, it's a, I think it's a big one, but I'll just use that to signify that we put a, SIM, put a SIM card in the device. The SIM card you put in it has an APN. Um, not sure, I think that's Access Point Network or something, but basically this, the SIM card has some settings that the system needs to know, that you need to tell your tracker what the, that, that stuff is. So then the system can then talk to other things. That, that's, if you haven't done that, all you're going to get is phone it or text it and get the, the big long code with the link to Google Maps. That's all you're going to get. If you want to go further than that, You've got to then um, put the APN in and stuff so your, your device can have a conversation with uh, the app or the internet. Because basically what you're doing is with the app is your, your device is talking to it as if it was a phone. Like, like this phone, when I wander around all over the place now, this is telling Google where I am. Which isn't an issue because it's all a free service. Um, I'm not going to get, you know, kind of hysterical about that. That's just that's that shit happens. Um, so yeah, so so the the app and the web's interface is is talking to a device and probably somewhere on a database is recording the location, the the app or the a database separate to your device is doing that. It's not your device doing that. All your device is doing is sending that information. Okay, to do that, you need the APN. If you haven't got the APN and haven't got all that kind of stuff, then all your device is going to do is to respond to you with that big long code. So if you've got the APN sorted out, you've put in the password, you've done all that kind of stuff, um, you can go to the web address that they give you, put in your IMEI number, the password that they give you and log in and you can see where your device is. Um, so th this is the app that they give you and all I really care about um, are probably the real time, maybe the historical and sometimes the issue as well. That's all I really care about. Now at the moment I can see from looking at this screen that I'm good to go because the device knows that my bike is stationary. So if, if I wasn't good to go, that would say offline. That would mean that there's not a conversation going on. Now, I, I can still send a, a text or phone my device and it'll send me the, the big link, but at the moment my device is not talking to the internet. It's not, telling the, not filling that database up with, with locations that I can go and check later on. So, th that bit... The APN stuff is easy, it's all in the instructions and stuff. Um, as long as you know that it's TK star that you would go to. So, so if, if, you're, if you've bought one of, one of the, um, if you've bought the TK star 
tracking app, you might not know that it's called TK Star. You might it might be called, you know, Dave's special tracking app because it's been white labeled or it's been rebranded as his thing. But it's essentially that. So the, the link in my description shows the probably the best instructions I've found so far about this. And that'll tell you how about all the APN stuff and getting all that kind of malarkey. Um, You've then got to do a couple of other things. So, so I'm, I'm happy with this one because if I go into real time now on the app, it'll show me exactly where my bike is. And, it, and it's, you know, it's, it's exactly where it is. Um, it'll go into that. Um, it'll, I can have a look at where it's been and stuff as long as I've been sending data to, um, to, the, to the, whatever the database is for TK Star to, to give me a, an idea of what's going on with it. There are other stuff that I can do, but I don't use them because I don't care. So the geofence, for example, I don't do that. I can't. I can't do that because that's something that I suppose is is wasted for me. So the way I operate this is I have a Labara um, pay-as-you-go SIM card in my bike in the in the tracker. So the Labara pay-as-you-go SIM card has um, a, I don't know, a, a £10 top up on it. And when it gets to £2, it automatically tops up another £10 and stuff. Um, so when I phone it, uh, anytime I can phone it, I get a response back. If my bike gets stolen, I log on to Libara. I add, I then add probably maybe a gig or a 500 megabyte of data add-on. Um, because if, I don't, if you don't have data running on that SIM card, you're going to get none of this. You're going to get none of the app, none of the web interface that I'll show you in a second as well. You won't get this. So you've got to have that on. Um, when you've got that, if you then come to, to your device and it says offline, you've then got to either, you've, you've got to wake the device up. Um, so you can do that in a, in, a, in a number of ways. Send it a send it a, a text or ring it. That'll that'll wake it up. Um, and probably more importantly, when you when you want to wake it up to do what you're about to do next, is put the put the data bolt on. Leave it a couple of minutes while you while you're calling the police or having a cup of tea or something. And then you want to send the GPRS. Um, the GPS on uh, text to the device to turn GPS on because it will turn off after about I think five minutes of inactivity it will, it will turn off so you, you want to do that or what I and so I'd send GPS on to send that and then I'd send the sleep off signal to it so it's like sleep one two three four five six space off the device will not go into sleep mode. It'll keep just sending its its information to to uh, to the to the to the internet, to that database and stuff, and, it, and it'll keep um, updating itself. Um, having done all that kind of stuff, you would hope this would then say stationary um, or moving or or whatever, but not offline. Um, you can also on issue here if it hasn't. Turned on GPRS, GPRS. You can you can put arm, click on arm or disarm here, and that that alarm it as well. That just basically sends the you know the the, the GPRS signal to it as well. Um, that's you know so I so I'm I'm in the situation where my where my my bike's been stolen. Um, I put data on my um, my camera goes mental, can't focus. Yeah, I put I put data on my Labara account. I send the I send the device the GPRS on signal. I also send the sleep off signal, and that's that's all in the instructions of what to do. That that that's that's kind of the first couple of steps I do, and then I go and check in here that it's working and and um and I'm getting stuff back from it, either real time where it is um, historical. Or if you look at the top here, you'll it'll say moving that all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the app. the The other thing that you, I don't think you can see on the device, um, is something that you need to do on um, on the TK Star website. And and I've had I've had the device now for two years. Um, and when I first tried to get it back up and running, I I couldn't get it back up and running until I went onto the TK Star the website and 
and saw something that, well, just said to me, well, this, this is never going to work. Um, because my IMEI number that you get with the, um, the device and you then register it with the TK Star website the, the first time you use it, my IMEI number was out of date, was, was invalid. And, and that's, I think, if, you had one, if you've had the TK Star for over a year and you don't know this, you, you probably need to sort this out before your bike gets nicked and I'll and, and I'll show you that on the on the site now after I've gone for a wee okay so this this is this is the um the web interface and when I just when I kind of had my problem as it were um I found it in here so if we go on the top here is the, I suppose, the code of, of my device. Um, and on the top here, activation time. So that's that's when I first activated this. And then in here was a year on from there. There was a year's um, gap. And it was it was out of date. Um, and, I, and I couldn't find anything about that. I then found a... Um, I think a post on their Facebook page, and then you kind of get to this. There's one of these companies that have an old web address and a new web address still going because they haven't quite worked it out. A term one off, a term one on. Um, so it's quite weird. Uh, and I think because they're they're rebadged a lot of a lot of times, it's it's confusing. But if you go into the web interface here and you're not getting anything online, nothing's happening and stuff. This is probably the first place you'd go and check the ex expiration date. Because um, the capitalist system works, uh, nothing is for free. And that was kind of when I first bought this. I thought, well, how can they do this for free? And this is where you see it. Now, um, I think it's... In fact, I'll show you. So if you go to their finance page, this is the TK, TK Star website, the finance page, you'll see at the bottom here there's an annual fee of $5 a year or... Uh, a ten dollar lifetime for 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 life for each IMEI number. So obviously ten dollars. Why would you not pay? Why would you pay five dollars for a year? Um, yeah. So ten dollars for life. Pay the uh, pay that to that PayPal account there. Make sure you include your IMEI number. Then when you go back into the to the the tracking here, this will be updated. So you know, a hundred years from now, is when mine mine runs out. So that's probably, I would say, because it's because it doesn't. You know, n nowhere have I read anything about this going out of date anywhere. So um, that possibly is your problem. My pleasure.